Good afternoon, everyone. I wanted to delve a little bit further into this new light scene in the sky called Steve. This James Bond timing where the ESA just sent a spacecraft right through this thing from a phone call on the ground from these witnesses of the light. It's just too quirky on the timing. But during that time, intense auroral displays. Looks like it's actually streaming directly from space. Incredible photos. And one thing to notice right away, it skips from that blue right down to the greens. The red band is gone. Interestingly, during the power outage last Friday, there's an entire 12-hour gap in the auroral activity forecast. Universal time, 11.21 a.m. would have been 7.21 in New York. But the timestamp for the auroral forecast re emerges at 325 in the afternoon. But the following day, incredibly intense aurora, spotted all the way down in upstate New York. And then a couple days later, train troubles again, Penn Station, overhead wire problems, too coincidental. And while you're watching the video, please subscribe to Adapt 2030. Last week's notable story, auroral photographers renaming these lights in the sky never seen before, Steve. Some claim it's a proton arc, others stating that it's a plasma streamer, electrified so much now in glow mode that we can see it in the atmosphere. Now what the quirkiness of the entire story is, these ground observers somehow gave a phone call to somebody who knew some mission control specialist in the European Space Agency that instantly diverted a satellite to fly directly through that current to get a temperature and a particle measurement. Now what kind of James Bond precision is that? And they found inside the 25 kilometer wide ribbon. You're telling me that they're able to redirect a satellite to literally thread a needle of something that's 25 kilometers wide from this entire circumference of our planet. Let alone would the satellite pass directly over that? There's a couple questions that are raised that are interesting to be thinking about. But the news release always uses that standard photo where they cut it about halfway up. They don't actually go to the top where it turns into the purple and white ranges. They just show you the regular bottom reddish pinkish glow. Now the ESA states that it does not stem from the interaction of solar particles with the Earth's magnetic field. So it has to be something else. What is it? Plasma activated into glow mode is probably the answer that they don't want to give you because that would indicate a great change in the atmosphere of our planet as well as a direct connection to the sun changing phase as well. I'd like to hear your thoughts on what you think it might be and also the precision accuracy of navigating a satellite after a phone call from a ground observer to get these measurements to guarantee you that it's nothing to do with new energetic particles entering our atmosphere. But on the nights from the 21st through the 24th, some amazing auroras coming down. The photographers right here had to have been mesmerized. The greens, okay, we're used to seeing that, but when you got these purple and these incredibly energetic blue color spectrum auroras coming down. Literally, it looks like it's pouring out of the heavens. And one thing to notice with this as well, it goes from green, what looks like closer to ground level. Usually there's a red band in there as it transitions sort of into the really soft purples that we normally see, but the red band had been totally drowned up by the current flow in going directly to purple and then blue. These types of auroral displays with this intensity of the blue color spectrum rarely witnessed. Some stunning images coming out showing you the current flow into the atmosphere. Absolutely electrifying. No pun intended. But you'll see that skip again of the color bandwidth of red and purple this time just going straight from green to blue. This one's exceptional, just straight green to blue white. Pillars to the heavens. And those with cameras that were under the Aurora, apparently the sound was something unusual as well. These were so intense, they were sighted in upstate New York. 
And another interesting fact, we look at the power outage time at 7.20 a.m. And then when you look at the auroral forecast, there's a 12-hour skip when that actual power outage occurred in the east coast of the United States, rolling all over to the west coast. So 11.20 a.m. UTC would have been that 7.20 a.m. power outage time. Bring that over to California, need to subtract three hours. But notice the timestamp skip. It goes from 3.25 a.m. UTC straight up. And the next image we get for the forecast is at 3.25 p.m. There's a full 12-hour missing log in there somewhere during this event. But then the aurora activity really kicks up and they show it in the forecast. Watch how this shifts. It's 4.55 UTC time, AM, and then over those next five hours, that's how much it shifted from the east to the west. And then another electrical phenomenon happens at Penn Station a day later. More overhead wire problems. Just makes you think, how vulnerable is our grid to the next geomagnetic storm that comes ripping through our very weakened magnetosphere as our sun enters this grand solar minimum? From this point forward, these effects are going to become more intense. As our magnetosphere declines further, there is even going to be less protection from what the sun throws at us. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. As always, it's really good to be prepared during these times with long-term food storage, everything from brown rice to spelt, chia, quinoa, parboiled rice. How about growing some of your own food? Heirloom vegetable seed kits from foodforliberty.com. Enough for you to plant several acres. And since they're heirloom, if you allow it to go to seed, you can save those seeds to replant for next year. And you know with GMO seeds, that's not possible.